it's time to ditch Lightroom Classic and forget about Photoshop. No, really. People often ask me why should they get Luminar Neo? Now, first of all, it now costs about £3.50 a month or around £70 to buy it and own it. And if that's not good enough, I think it's one of the most creative, intuitive and powerful photo editors out there. If you're interested to see why I think that, then follow me on this really creative video where I'll show you how super easy it is to transform your images. Moving into Luminar Neo, where I'm going to demonstrate and show you how really easy, fun and how fast it is to transform your photos. So if you never used Luminar Neo before, the first step is the catalog module. Very similar to Lightroom, where you just add your photos or you can add your physical folders from the computer and of course create the virtual albums where you can divide your images. We already have a photo ready, so we're going to start from the top and keep moving towards the right. With the image selected, of course, that we can move into the presets module. Now, there is a number of presets here that are already built in the application. You can purchase additional presets from us at Clever Photographer or, of course, that you can create your own presets and use them to speed up the workflow. For us, for today, we're not going to worry about it, but I just wanted you to know that there is that possibility to create your own presets or get inspired by others using some of the built-in presets here. Again, keep moving the right into the editing module. This is where the magic happens. So, moving here, obviously following the direction from left to right, we are going into our main editing toolbar. As you can see, the workflow is following the same direction. We are moving from the catalog, presets, edit and into the editing toolbar, where again you start from the top in the essentials tool and then you work your way through the editing toolbar. And the idea is that by the time you hit the professional section, you are pretty much ready to share your image. Now, today we're going to be working with this image right here. That's the Chichester Cathedral in the south of England in a town or city called Chichester. And I'm going to show you how really simple is it to transform it. So I photographed this myself standing in front of the cathedral, looking for that special moment when the sun will appear between the cathedral and the bell tower. Now it happened, however, as you can see, the sky was really boring, there is not much happening there and the overall light isn't great neither. So what we can do? Well, first come first, we can move into the develop tool where we can apply the traditional basic development. You've seen this in other editors, all the usual stuff from exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, black and whites, curves and so on. Or we can just speed up the process and rather than using the traditional tools and many sliders there, we can move into one of the smart tools here in Luminar Neo, which basically combines multiple tasks together. Just like the Enhanced AI, I can just take the Accent AI, increase it and that will do the basic development for me. It will adjust my highlights, shadows, black and whites and all that. So for the time being, we're just going to go gently somewhere around 10 and leave it for now. Of course, that we could also use the sky enhancer, which ultimately scans the image, select the sky and try to enhance it. Now, because it uses the AI, it will depend on what's on it to see what development or adjustment it will apply. So for this image, it will just make it darker and add a little bit of the blue gradient. But in fact, what we're going to do, we're going to transform the image, change the sky. So we're not going to use this slider. We're going to bring it back and continue. So just a little bit of accent AI. So talking about that, when we're talking about this kind of heavy transformation, like adjusting or swapping sky or enhancing the sun rays, we like to do that at the beginning of the editing. So we can then apply additional developments just to blend and merge everything together. So. First come first, it's the sky replacement. For this, we need to go into the landscape section, open the sky AI, and here in the sky AI section, we have a chance to apply one of the suggested skies, or we can click on a sky selection, which will open your sky gallery. 
When you click on a grey drop-down box, you will notice that there is a number of different libraries that includes skies that coming with the application. However, you can also add your own, which I already done in the custom section, and just select one of the skies from here, whichever you like. So let's see what will work the best. I think something like this. What we're going to do, we're just going to click on the sky. And when we do that, the application automatically create the mask and swap the sky for you. Once we have the sky selected, we can jump into the sky orientation where we can, for example, click on the flip. Once we do that, we adjust the sky towards the direction of the light, which is coming from here, and we can position it a little bit better. You can see that the rays are here and on our new sky, they are a little bit off. So to adjust this, we're just going to go into the horizontal position and shift the sky around like something like this. Now, looking at the horizon, we just need to bring the sky lower a little bit so we can do that using the horizon position. So we can bring it up to see where the edge is and then just bring it down to align it. Again, once we do that, one more time, just adjust the horizontal position to make sure that it works. And that's that. Close the sky orientation. Now, when it comes to mask, if we zoom in, you can see that actually the application already did a great job replacing the sky. So we don't have to worry about that but you can adjust the mask here. And more importantly, what we're going to do, we're going to apply a little bit of scene relighting. This will help us to match our new sky with the original foreground. So just adjust the relight strength a little bit, which will darken the foreground and relight the saturation just to match both of them together. So you can see we're getting a little bit more warmth in the building and the other elements. Let's double check before and after, and already the sky is a massive transformation of the image. With that being done, close the scene relighting reflection. Well, there isn't any on this image. So into the sky adjustments where we can apply different things, whatever we like, we can add a little bit of extra warmth into the sky and make the sky a little bit brighter or darker. I think in our case, we are just going to bring it down a little bit, maybe to somewhere around minus 10. So how about that? Few clicks to change the sky and completely transform the image. But we are not finished. So for the time being, we're going to close the sky AI tool. And once you close and apply any of the tools, it automatically moves into the edit tab. So when we go on the top, click on the edit tab, you can see that we have already applied the enhancement AI. Remember at the beginning, and we have applied or changed the sky using the sky AI tool. After this, what we're going to do, we're going to enhance the sun. So to do that, we're going to go back into the landscape section and this time click on the magical tool called sun rays. With that, first thing we're going to do, we're going to click on place sun center and that will allow us to get this little white dot and move the sun around. Now to see it a little better, let's just increase the amount and you will see how the sun is coming from here. Of course, this is not right because our sun is here. So we got to take the dot and basically just drag it down into the center here and align it with the original sun. Now, even though we align it, you can see that the white balance or the color of the new sun or enhanced sun doesn't match the original scene. So we need to adjust this. For this, let's just make this nice and visible and go into the warmth. In the warmth, we're going to take the sun warmth and increase it pretty much all the way and sun rays warmth as well, just probably somewhere around here. With that, what we're going to do now, we're going to zoom a little bit closer and go into the sun setting. This is where we can use the different slider to adjust the sun so we can bring down the glow a little bit. This is a little bit too strong. So I'm thinking somewhere around 40 with the sun glow radius again, just like with all the sliders in Neo, simply use them, move them around and see what you prefer. If you don't want to use it, just continue with the other one. Sun glow amount, let's have a look, maybe just a little bit, something like this, and that looks good. Now, that's a sun setting. When it comes to ray settings, let's have a look. Number of sun rays, I think, do we have too many? Maybe just bring the number down a little bit, somewhere around 37. And you can use the randomize to move the sun rays around again to get what you're looking for. I'll leave it on zero, so that's good, and that's perfect. Zoom out again and close the race setting. With that, we can now go and adjust our sun rays length. With that, you'll just bring it down and see what you prefer. We can go really long, which is a little bit too much. 
I'm thinking probably just somewhere around here. So the sun rays finishing at this stage of the image, at this location. Now we are finished with the sun rays tool, so we can close it and we're gonna continue. Once you apply the heavy lifting, the heavy editing, like your sky, sun rays, fog, mist, or all this kind of stuff, it's good to apply additional adjustments on the top of it to blend everything together. One way to do this is to, for example, go back to the Enhance AI tool, which you already know how to use. And once we open it, again, we can apply a little bit of Accent AI, because at this moment, the application is taking into consideration the image, as well as the new sky and sun. So we can apply a little bit of that, but we can also apply a little bit of Sky Enhancer, maybe just a touch, somewhere around 20. With that being done, again, close the Enhance AI tool. And a few more things we can do. One is to move into the creative section where we can apply a little bit of mystical tool to add that very romantic and cinematic glow. So somewhere around 20. And on the top of it, go into the mood tool, which ultimately allow you to apply LUTs to the photo. LUTs will help us to adjust the colors and again, blend them together. So click on choose LUT dropdown box. Navigate into one of the libraries or collections that come with the application, like cinematic toning. And when you hover over the LUTs, you can immediately see what they do to your photo. Now the long beach looks good, but it's just a little bit too saturated. So let's try creative, where usually the candlelight works very well. So let's go for that. Of course that you can add your own LUTs by going back to the dropdown box and using the add custom LUT file. And once you choose the LUT, you can adjust the amount of the effect, contrast and saturation. So for me, something like this will work. Quick look before and after. And even though it's quite subtle difference, trust me, it makes it work together. Now to finish it, we're going to apply a tool which is really simple, but actually it can be really powerful. The key here is to, again, uh, control the light, which is coming from this direction. And to do that, we're going to use simple vignette. So into the Essentials tool, into the Vignette tool, which we're going to open and take the amount slider and bring it down. Now, traditionally, just like in most of the applications, when you do that, the center of the vignette will be in a center. And we don't want that. What we want, we want the center of the vignette to be around the sun. So back up a little bit, click on Choose Subject. And once we do that, we can now click and adjust the center of the vignette. How cool is that? It's like a little torch. So we're going to just position it somewhere around here, creating that really lovely darker area here and adding more attention towards the part with the sun and with the light. If you think that the amount is too strong, no problem. Just adjust it, bring it back down a little bit. And you can also open the advanced setting where you can actually apply a little bit of inner light. So extra brightness in the center of the vignette. So somewhere around here, close it, double check the before and after. And I think that we are pretty much finished. So what else is there to do? Double check the before and after. Crazy, right? Super simple. So let's open the edits tool. Let's have a look at it one more time. Simple adjustments or development using the enhanced AI. Few clicks with the sky AI to replace the sky. Enhance the sun rays using the sun rays tool. Again, develop it using the enhanced AI just to match everything together. Extra cinematic glow using the mystical tool. Touch of mood tool to color grade everything together and really finish the overall look using the vignette tool. And just like magic, one more time before and after. And I think the result is incredible. So there you have it. It only takes a few minutes to completely transform your images. And with the use of the coupon code CPNEO10 and the link in the description of this video, you can get right now Luminar Neo for just around £3.50 a month. Or if you're more a one-time purchase person, then £70 is all that it takes to have all these incredible tools available for your editing. You can see how easy it is. You can use Luminar Neo as a standalone program, or you can have it as an extra secret in your sleeve to add extra touch to your photos. So one more time, link in the description and the coupon code is CPNEO10. And don't forget that on the top of it, 
Here at Clever Photographer YouTube channel, we have over 300 free videos which will help you to master this editing software. And of course, we have lots of resources on our website at Clever Photographer.